Hello everyone and welcome to our podcast series uh, Sai ROI Tales an avenue of Sai ROI where we feature STEM professionals from all across India to share their stories with our members I'm Rohit Kongari a postdoctoral scientist in the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research at USFDA and I'm also an active member of the current Sai ROI le- leadership team Today I'll be hosting the second episode of uh, Stories in Sai ROI Tales for the year 2023 along with my teammate sonam thanks rohit hi everyone i am sonam pande a research development officer at center for stem cell research center a unit of in stem bangalore christian medical college campus bagayam valur tamil nadu and an active member of current sai ro team leadership today we have with us dr jyoti sharma who currently works as a scientist f directed in the international cooperation division department of science and technology within the ministry of science and technology government of india dr sharma holds a doctorate in microbiology with a pg diploma in pharmaceutical regulatory affairs and clinical research Dr. Sharma has a professional career spanning more than 18 years of experience in handling technology lead interventions for rural population especially for the women and minority groups the pharmaceutical industry and international science and technology cooperation while she played a significant role to make india polio free and during the her 5 years tenure in pharmaceutical industry her passion to support stm education encouraged her to formulate new scheme policy for women researcher stm professionals and student from lower economics and culturally diverse background her current research projects at the queensland university of technology australia provides her with the an opportunity to investigate the factor influencing the success of women scientists and culturally linguist uh, deserved student in stm dr sharma is well published in the field of development of transgenic women in scientists stm education science diplomacy environment bio waste and science communication she is also a recipient of mg narsimha rao academic award scrc fast track young scientist award imrit uh, imriti devi women scientist award india uh, indira gandhi life lifetime achievement award q u t s t m diversity and inclusion award 2019 and s t e Prerna Samman recently she, she was one of the three finalists of the women in technology inspiring diversity in STM category she is an active member of different com- committees working for the gender pers- parties and the regular speaker at national and international conferences workshop seminar and all india radio uh, dr sharma we are very honored to have you as a guest on our podcast series um while there are so many things that we would want to get your insight on i would like to get started with uh, knowing a little bit about the uh, department of science and technology and particularly the international cooperation division and uh, what its mission is thank you very much sonam rohit and team sai roi i'm so glad to be with you and share my experiences with our listeners okay We will start with the introduction of the Department of Science and Technology. It was established in May 1971 to promote science and technology and play the role of a nodal department for organizing, coordinating and promoting basically SNT activities in the country. The department has wide ranging activities and mainly responsible for formulation of policies relating to science and technology. one way dst is promoting new areas of snt with a special emphasis on emerging areas like artificial intelligence cyber physical system climate change and so on the other hand we are facilitating transferring technologies to support the weaker section women and other disadvantaged sections of society we have international snt cooperation including the appointment of scientific counselors abroad one of the very important mandate of dst is to communicate science and technology to masses stimulate scientific and technological temper 
we are supporting granting aid to individual researchers scientific research institutions scientific associations and bodies like insa national academy of science national academy uh, indian national academy of engineering and indian science congress association tst has around 20 autonomous ascent institutions three bilateral international centers with the usa france and germany and we have our science wings in indian missions at berlin moscow tokyo and washington dc uh through our international division we are responsible for negotiating concluding and implementing science technology and innovation agreements between india and other countries and i am delighted that we are having active cooperation with more than 44 countries thank you ma'am this giving a brief uh, uh, introduction of department of science and technology with this i can uh, just ask you other question that can you give us a overview of dst program fellowship and scholarship for the re- young researcher currently available in science and technology yes sonam apart from support through grant in aid projects there are many fellowship uh programs available for students young researchers and even for the senior researchers like dst encourages science and technology at every level the list is exhausted so i will try to highlight a few important ones here first i will uh, i would like to talk about one of our interesting program named inspire innovation in science pursued for inspired research to attract talent at any at an early age and to build the required critical resource pool for strengthening and expanding the r&d base this program was launched in 2008 at a total cost of approximate rupees 2000 crores and is continuing in the 12th plan period at a bursary allocation of rupees 2200 crores so you can see how large is this program The base scholarship starts for school students of the age group 10 to 15 years ranging from class 6 to class 10th standard but this program has different components for example the she fellowship under program inspired program is for talented youth in the age group of 17 to 22 years the second arm of this program is assured opportunity for research careers for the age group of 22 to 27 and the inspire faculty scheme which offers assured opportunity every year for 1000 post doctoral researchers in the group of 27 to 32 years for 5 years in both basic and applied sciences apart from inspire there are many other schemes like kishore vigyanik protsahan yojana uh, there are pm fellowship for doctoral research national post doctoral fellowship swarna jayanti fellowship for scientists with an excellent track record in the age group of 30 to 40 years i already mentioned that dst not only supporting basic research but dst also supports socially relevant research projects so dst is supporting young minds through a program called scheme for young scientists and technologists who are working at the ground level and trying to solve social issues through the intervention of science and technology and here i would like to mention one more scheme especially for rohit this is a ramanujan fellowship which is mean to for those young indian minds who would like to come back to india and contribute to indian science this is mean uh, uh, for in scientists or engineers who are below the age of 40 years apart from these schemes there are opportunities for masters doctoral and post doctoral students to meet the nobel laureate at germany to attend the asian science camps and interact with leading asian researchers there is a long list so i would like to request my listeners that they can visit dst website to get the details regarding the opening dates selection procedure of this fellowship programs we not only attract indian researchers but the department also supports the visit of students from other countries to the indian laboratories for example recently scrb 
you must be knowing that SCRB is part of DST, has joined National Science Foundation USA. In the graduate research opportunities worldwide, it's called GROW program to bring talented American students to Indian laboratories and academic institutions to build a deeper appreciation of the culture of innovation and long standing tradition of scientific inquiry in India. You both are aware that there are so many entrepreneurs in country and it has become a culture to become entrepreneur. So DST is supporting our young minds through various programs under an umbrella called Nidhi. So I will request to all that you should go on Nidhi website, which is a dedicated website. You will get a lot of opportunities if you are having a startup and you are really interested to become an entrepreneur. That was a lot of information, Dr. Sharma. Thank you. But I know that like you're also uh, involved in um, uh, policy formulation uh, in DST to support women in science. So could you share some uh, existing opportunities uh, by DST uh, where like, you know, they support them at different stages of your of their career progression? Yeah, very valid question, Rohit. Uh, you know that despite approximately 45% of women STEM graduates at the university level, less than 17% of women are working in the mainstream of research in Indian research institutions. The situation is the same or even worse in other countries, including most of the developed countries. So the Department of uh, Department of Science and Technology, or we can say the government of India is very proactive to promote women's participation at every level and adopted the national policy for empowerment of women in 2001, intending to bring about the empowerment of women and eliminate all forms of discrimination against women. And during the 12 five-year plan, the consolidated of all women oriented scheme was carried out and termed Kiran. Kiran is knowledge involvement in research advancement through nurturing. The primary objective of Kiran are to utilize the potential of women scientists, technologists in SNT, ultimately leading to the empowerment of the nation. So like there are many arms of Kiran to address the challenges of women researchers like women fellowship scheme, consolidation of university research for innovation and excellence in women, Vigyan Jyoti and mobility scheme. As a broader platform, the women fellowship scheme creates opportunity for the re-entry of women scientists into the profession. Uh, like if you have a career break due to the motherhood or social responsibilities. So all schemes are supporting women scientists at different level of their career progression. Uh, apart from Kiran, there are many individual centric and competitive mode of research funding opportunities like Sir Power, Sir Women Excellence Award. Even though there are many international programs for women researchers like Indo-US Fellowship for Women in STEM, Women Involvement in Science and Engineering Research, Visor Scheme, which has been implemented by Indo-German Science and Technology Center. So again, I would like to request all that you should visit DST and other respective agencies website to get the full details about these grant uh, opportunities. Uh, apart from all these opportunities, I'm happy to share that recently the DST with the British Council opted for an international program called the Athena Swan Charter and it has been renamed in India as GATI. GATI means Gender Advancement for Transforming Institutions. So this program has been opted to build the capacity to support women scientists. Uh, I hope many listeners must be aware that the Athena Swan Charter was established in 2005 in the UK to empower women's advancement and leadership. And after its huge success in UK institutions, it has been subsequently implemented in Ireland, in Australia, and now in India. In India, it is at pilot stage, but 
I am hopeful that after completion of this pilot stage, we can implement this program at the larger level. This is a very informative, um, uh, your, uh, the last question. Uh, with this, I think uh, our listener also want to know that uh, how to enter, uh, if you want to scientists in DSC, so how do we can enter? So uh, let us uh, talk about a little bit your current job. What are the most important qualities, qualification a candidate should have a get a job at a DST as a scientist? And what factor motivate you to work efficiently in your present job? Sure, Sonam. Though I believe that every person learn with her or his experience uh, during the time period, but definitely every position needs some kind of qualification and some kind of experience and qualities. So any person having a master's doctoral degree in science, engineering or mathematics with research or industry experience is eligible to apply to DSD. However, apart from academic qualifications, a person should have a broad understanding to understand others' research and be good at communication and working with the stakeholders. I am grateful to have had years of experience which has allowed me to understand the challenges and issues that both sides face. So my job provides me with an opportunity to know cutting edge research in different areas at the international and national levels, formulate some need-based programs or policies and their implementation at the grassroots level and work with the diverse stakeholders. I take every day as a new challenge and try to contribute to others' research and motivate them. Here I would like to give one example. When I was working with Women Scientist Scheme, I worked with thousands of women scientists and I know Sonam during that time only. <laughs> so when I was handling a Women Scientist Scheme, I got an opportunity to know their challenges and issues to work as a researcher. Few of the main challenges are rigorous work-life balance due to motherhood or social responsibilities, difficulties in making networking and lack of role models, especially in science and technology. After knowing their challenges, I understand that most women scientists are capable to take leadership positions. However, they need some kind of motivation, encouragement and right guidance. It motivates me to organize leadership workshops for mid-level career women scientists and provide them with a chance to meet with role models. These kind of workshops help them to know the challenges of other women scientists and how they overcome these. Now, I am happy to share that many of them have taken leadership roles in their institutions, running international projects as lead researchers, and working as a mentor for other young researchers. So, seeing the success of other researchers after providing the required support and love and appreciation received from them motivates me to do more and do my job with new keenness. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Um, so, we, we got to hear about what you do. We are also interested in learning about how other DST scientists are uh, contributing to the Indian science and technology fields. Uh, so how are usually these roles different from conventional lab scientists, say in academia? Could you give us an idea about that? Uh, yes, yes, we are a little bit different from the researchers who are working in different research institutions. So you know that DST is an apex funding agency and like scientists working in the DST are responsible for contributing to policy making, the implementation of government programs and policies and facilitating researchers. As, you, uh, as I already said that we are not involved in any laboratory research, but we are responsible for identifying the gap areas in the existing research and formulating need-based programs accordingly. 
like for example i already told you that when i realized that there is need to organize some leadership programs for women scientists to motivate them to guide them to give give them an opportunity to meet role models then we design a program accordingly so we also work with different stakeholders to bring researchers technocrate and industry to one platform so research can be translated from lab to land yeah as you mentioned uh, your previous question that networking and the mentor is basically necessary for your career so i would like to ask that how effective was your networking in securing your current position and have been influenced by any role model or mentor to achieve your career goals uh thanks onam to ask such an important question i would again like to mention that networking mentoring and the presence of a role model are very significant to achieve your goals in any career especially in science and technology research even many studies reveal that it is not only exclusion by men but also self imposed barriers including hesitation and gendered modesty that prevent women from networking uh when i was taking interviews with women scientists in australia and india for my research work even one of the very senior scientists shared that sometimes i feel women themselves lack self esteem a man reacts in a different way to an opportunity than a woman men will go and grab it but women will think twice she will think about her children husband or family before taking an opportunity they procrastinate so much by the time they take the decision the opportunity will go though i got my current position based on my academic degrees professional experience and performance during the selection process but i was influenced by many role models during the beginning of my career like dr manju sharma who was secretary dbt when i was pursuing my masters and doctoral degree i am fortunate that life gave me an opportunity to work closely with her and other eminent women scientists i don't have any specific mentor right now but i am always inspired by other researchers my fellow colleagues and grassroots level workers who work for the betterment of the society this is for my young listeners that the presence of women role models help to reduce the implicit stereotype that science is masculine and leaves positive impacts on behavior which translates into better performance overall uh continuing the discussion uh dr sharma is there any advice you would like to share with our listeners regarding how to begin a career in research and grant management uh yes rohit generally a grant manager either assist with getting funding for their organizations projects and mission or assist with giving funds from their organization to worthy cause like we are doing our job in dst uh in developed countries every research institute or higher education has a grant manager to navigate researchers for preparing their grant applications as per the funding agency's guidelines and pre and post award management now i can see that many premium research institutions are also offering similar kinds of job in india apart from searching for a job in funding agencies like dst dbt csir meti or other ministries our young listeners may regularly should regularly observe website of premium research institutions and universities to find these kind of opportunities and i would like to encourage them to apply for these kind of positions so they can contribute in others research yeah as you mentioned that uh, women is always thinking before taking any career so i would like one uh, question that considering your active involvement in social media for women in science we wonder if you have experienced any challenges in your academic career due to your gender uh sure sonam thanks for asking one more interesting question uh i married when i was in the final year of my masters 
I was very keen to pursue my doctoral degree and got admission to G.B. Pant University and Indian Agricultural Research Institute, Pusa. I chose Pusa, IRI, for my PhD as my husband was working in Delhi. So I, I have no option. I have to be in Delhi. I was only 21 when my son came into my life. And I never realized that it is a difficult task to make a work-life balance with motherhood responsibilities. At the same time, my mother-in-law suffered from liver cirrhosis and needed her time, love and special care. It seemed difficult to complete my PhD at that time and many times I thought of leaving my PhD in between and doing some other co short course like BA to become a school teacher instead of a researcher. But I never quit. I was determined to complete my doctoral degree and tried my best to make a balance between my family responsibilities and my dream. This was through the determination hard work and support of my family that I completed my PhD with a Young Scientist Award. And after almost 18 years of my career in research, industry and as a policy and grant manager, now I'm again struggling to make the right work-life balance as a mother of grown-up kids. So you can understand that despite many difficulties and hurdles, I never thought that it is a difficult task for a woman to achieve her goals. I always thought that it is a normal life and it happens to everyone. I love and always mention Mary Curie quote that life is not easy for any of us, but what of that? We must have perseverance and above all confidence in ourselves. We must believe that we are gifted for something and that this thing must be attained. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Um, so I think we are uh, at the end of this podcast. We would like to ask you uh, one final question. Uh, what suggestions do you have for the SIROI uh, STEM community? <laughs> okay, Rohit. Uh, first, I would like to say to all our listeners who is working in the field of science and technology, they should be aware about every opportunities. So they should visit the website of funding agencies like DSD, DBT, CSIR, others on a regular basis and try to make networking with their fellow colleagues. And I would just like to say that uh, with reference to women in STEM, that it is the responsibility of all of us to address the gap by investigating why equity and diversity exit in the STEM field. Despite receiving support such as a specific government programs, trainings and incentives. Like, you know, if we will not support the 50% of our workforce, because I already said that there are more women studying science, but very few women are doing science. So we have to support them during their crucial uh, period when they need support from family, from their colleagues, from their society. A platform like SAI ROI is helping to assist STEM professionals at every stage like young professionals, women professionals, even I, I have seen your website and I found many interesting information. So uh, I would like to say that uh, everyone who is listening this podcast they should connect with sai roi so they they will find an opportunity to meet like minded people they can uh, collaborate they can uh, they can have a good networking for their future research so apart from available professional support and uh, to uh, link with these kind of network and individuals approach and passion matter a lot in the research profession. So if you are aware, you are passionate, you are hardworking and always motivating. No one can stop you to reach your set goals. You are always welcome to be in touch with me anytime. If you have any specific questions, you can find my contact details on DST website. You can write me an email 
it may happen that you may not get me through phone call but i will try to respond all your queries through email thank you so much ma'am for sharing such valuable information and advice with our listener we look forward to see you what else you can achieve in your already amazing career and contribute to the promotion of women as well as culturally and linguist diverse researchers through the government policies and hope it motivate our listener from the india in stem community to follow path thank you sonam thank you rohit thank you listeners of sairoi and thank you your team for your hard work effort and efforts to make this podcast thank you